Hey there, film fans. Now, I've come with something a little bit different this week. As I'm not in the UK, I am in San Francisco in this fabulous travel lodge. I thought I would review for you very briefly, though, the five movies that I managed to fit into my flight the other day on BA. The first film that I had to see as soon as I literally sat down on the plane, before we'd taken off, was Mistress America, which I really wanted to catch when it was showing in the cinemas, but somehow missed. I really love Frances Ha, which is also a Noah Baumbach and Greta Gerwig co-write collaboration. I think there are a couple as well, which is pretty cool. I really loved that. Um, so I was really excited for Mistress America, and it did not disappoint. Fellow Wisitanians will know about that lacrimosity syndrome thingy that sets you off when you're flying. Well, I certainly was crying a lot at this. Um, Greta Gerwig's character, Brooke, is really cool and fun and charismatic, but at the same time, spiralling out of control with her life, doesn't know where she's going. Um, it's quite sad to watch, you know, some people really hate her, she's quite egotistical, so it was very much up and down. I guess she's a good example of a manic pixie dream girl and you see the bad side of that. Also nice, because it's all about girls, male characters take a backseat, which is quite unusual. It also made me laugh out loud on the plane a few times, mostly at Michael Chernus's character, but there's some great lines in there as well. Lines like, you're much more of an asshole than you initially appear. I guess one that really got me was, I need someone I can love, not just keep up with. Anyway, really liked Mistress America, check it out if you can, big thumbs up. Second film, The Martian. Yes, I cried, they played David Bowie, I can't help myself cried everywhere. It's quite strange really, you've got Jeff Daniels, Dumb and Dumber, who's the head of NASA, and then you've got this amazingly clever botanist astronaut played by Matt Damon. It's interesting as well, because it's a while since I saw Interstellar, but I'm pretty sure that Matt Damon's character was like stranded and there was some type of tie in there maybe. Nice little Lord of the Rings reference with Sean Bean there. One does not simply reference Lord of the Rings. I studied science, I can vouch that most scientists are pretty dull and not half as funny as the characters in this film, but still it was nice to see them not just portrayed as your standard nerds. It was very funny in places and I think that made it stand out for me from like Interstellar and Gravity and all the other modern spacey stories we've had. Movie number three is 45 years. I didn't cry solidly through the whole plane journey, although that might be how it seems. But yeah, this did make me cry, but that's because it's just totes emotion. Man, also dead amaze. Flits back to the manic pixie dream girl theme of, of my flight, uh, in that there's um, the lead male character's ex-girlfriend who died and was preserved in ice and is frozen in time back from when they were going out and he's now 45 years older. Because I'm a child, I kept getting distracted by the use of the word ballcock. I don't know what a ballcock is, I should probably find out, but they talked about it a lot um, and it made me laugh. Um, which is always embarrassing on a plane journey. Also, one of my favourite songs played Staggerly and they had a little dance, which was nice. All in all, really enjoyed it. Great dynamic between the couple. Very sad. Interesting that a couple can be together for so long and yet be kind of alone. But yeah, really good, check it out. Movie number four, which I was gutted I missed on telly the other week, was Amy, the documentary that has surpassed box offices in the UK. Yes, I cried. Come on, it's a really, really sad story. I guess Amy has a couple of the elements of the manic pixie dream girl as well, but unfortunately she got corrupted from being quite a nice girl, it seems, by so many influences mostly us, I guess, the media and the public. I lived in Camden around the time that she was living there. I ran into her occasionally in toilets and things, and I thought I knew quite a lot about her, but it was really nice to get that deeper sense of who she really was. I mean, I'm not someone who goes out and buys Amy Winehouse albums, but she really is very iconic to our generation. It's really sad that she was just a girl with a talent that never wants to be famous, and that thing that she never wanted is what got her. Movie number five I'm not going to dwell on too much because it was at the end of my flight I just needed to fit something in. I wanted something kind of easy going so I went for Paper Towns. Again focusing on the Manic Pixie Dream Girl idea but trying to peek behind the curtain and show that it's not a real thing. This is the one that didn't make me cry. There was nothing particularly new for me here. I don't think it was aimed at me particularly, probably a younger demographic. I felt like it was using a lot of cliches that we've seen in a lot of coming of age movies quite a forgettable film really. So have you guys seen any of these films and what did you think? 
What films have you watched on planes recently? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.